probably the most asked questions I get is when you're on a big lake, a big lake for smallmouth, where do you start? You know what I mean? Like a, a lot of the lakes that I grew up on when I was a little dude, where they, they were intimidating, they were intimidating. But the major tip, and hopefully we're gonna be able to show it today, Make a big lake, a small lake. There's one. I like what I'm seeing today, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Ugh. This is a lake that's got a ton of just solid ones like that. good fish right there but really what I'm gonna go at them with today I decided ah, I decided to go with a Strike King KVD flat 1.5 and what I really like about that bait that bait's silent silent's got a real real tight wiggle but the magic is in that color right there uh, that's a phantom watermelon red craw and uh, you know if, you, if you're an old school cranker there's been a lot of crankbaits back in the day that have that kind of transparent look to them. Whenever I would go to big lakes, they, they were always intimidating to me. And, and when I do seminars now, you know, probably the most asked questions I get is, where do you start? You know what I mean? When you look at your, your mapping, when you look at your Lake Master mapping and you're like, wow this lake is so intimidating it's so huge where do you begin to find that collision there he is make a big lake a small lake the number one thing i focus on begging begging point blank the number one thing i focus on on a big lake or a new lake that i fish with smallmouth or largemouth i start on the biggest flat in the lake oh stay hooked if you look if you're driving down the road and you look at a cornfield in the morning Stay or at dusk coming up you see deer out there yeah ha, ha 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 right they go out there to feed and then they go to their safe place they don't run to the other county they stay near that safe place they stay near that cornfield and they'll have routes if you deer hunt you know they will have routes to and from that cornfield to where they feed and to where they feel safe that's exactly what a flat is for a small mouth or even a large mouth. How about it? How about it? Right? I was just getting ready to make a comment. A lot of times what happens, oh, he wasn't going nowhere. I was just getting ready to make a comment. A lot of times what happens is you're on these giant expansive flats and you feel like you're looking for a needle in a haystack 
with these guys. Now we going, now we going. The best thing about it, when you are power winding for smallies, when they hit it, they hit it. Nice one. There he is. Stay hooked. Ripped it out of a piece of cabbage right there. And whoomp. Nice one, nice one, nice one. Stay hooked, stay hooked. He's got a face full, I think. Yeah, he's hooked. That's how you want him to get it. Nice one. Little dude. Oh. Little guy. See, that's how you, when they T-bone it like that, when they've got both sets of trebles in their face. How about it? Might be starting. Just saying. There's a tendency as a fisherman, when you get near a flat and you'll catch one or two for us to start our engine and go to the other side of the lake. It's the same principle that I'm talking about deer hunting. If you're hunting a cornfield, they did not run to another state. They're near it. It is the same thing with a bass and a flat. Let's head another one. Got him. They're here. I gotta land them on this side, okay? It's coming up. Oh, stay hooked. Might have found a collision. Here he comes. Oh, biggin', biggin', biggin'. Stay hooked. You just don't horse them. Let, let your drag slip a little bit. Don't horse them. Pull. Pull. Belly scoop them. Yeah, man. Huh? Huh? That's how you want them to get it. T boned. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. That's a big one. Here is the whole deal, in all honesty. I always talk about this. When you find that weed right there, cabbage, to me what ends up happening is those fish suspend in cabbage. They, they don't, I've seen it a lot on calm days where the sun's out. They'll be like eight foot, nine foot under the surface suspended in that. And anything that comes over their head, they destroy it. Like that fish was the exact deal. I ripped through that cabin and just whoop. That's awesome, dude. I'm sorry. That is awesome. Power winding a crankbait for smallmouth is so incredibly different than the way we've all kind of grown up cranking. You know, you always heard, you know, growing up to now that when you're cranking, whether you're on the Tennessee River or you're cranking a shoreline in Oklahoma, you want to hit something. You want you want to hit something, anything. That is not that is not this technique. You're not grinding this crankbait on the bottom. Really, that flat 1.5, if I put it on 12 pound fluorocarbon, a, a high speed lose reel, that's critical. A high speed lose reel. I was using a lose pro TI. The reason I use that reel, that reel is, is very good. It excels at throwing lighter baits. And, and a flat 1.5 feels like a potato chip. 
but if you have the wind at your back, you can launch that thing 30 to 40 yards. I never want that crankbait near the bottom. Small mouth that are on a flat or off the edge of a flat a lot of times, say there's cabbage or, or nothing, or it's just barren, I believe a small mouth is born to feed up on certain forage, whether it's emerald shiners, whether it's shad, whether it's perch. I, I think they are wired from the day they are born that if there is something above them that is not bigger than them, kill it. There he is. Uh-huh. Let's just not get in a hurry to leave yet, friends. These are areas that'll constantly reload. The only dangerous thing, the only dangerous thing with a crankbait is they can throw it. Ah. It's a good one. It's another nice one. Easy. They're getting it too. See how that, that fish is absolutely pinned. And that is a great example of what I was saying this morning. You just keep going and going and you get it gets monotonous to where you're like, man, I'm just, I'm not around them. Boy, when you get around them though, they'll let you know. That color right there to me for a small mouth, that's, it's amazing. Phantom watermelon, red craw. And it's really, really transparent, like you could see through it. And in clear water, whether you're up north like we are here, or you're down south on a clear water lake, that, that's a color you've got to have in your box. I like how they're getting it now too. Like I don't understand, I don't, I've never understood why smallmouth are so mad. Like they're so off. You know, are you just born now? You know what I mean? Like I've never caught like a smallmouth that was in a good mood where he bit soft and subtle and got him. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. I'm gonna swing him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you doing, boy? How are you doing? Gosh. Sun came out and everybody's happy now. That is like smallmouth 101, what's gone on today on this show is to recap in all honesty, do me a favor, you come to a big lake, biggest flats that there are, okay? Go on a sunny day. I love it. When they have that crankbait T-bone in their mouth, you have absolutely got the right color. Do not change. Nice one. Got every hook in his face. Nice one. Gosh. I tell you, today was textbook smallmouth 101. When the lights turn on, everybody came to the party. A lot of people, when they, when they throw a crankbait, you know, boy, they'll get it just like that. The, the, the whole deal with this, it, it's a total reaction you, you don't want them to get a good look at it. You want that, you want that bait absolutely clipping, going. And what's, what's interesting is when they're really like, you know, the, some of the schools that we've got in today, you cannot reel it fast. They'll, they'll get it. They, they're the, they are the fastest fish in fresh water. This is the thing about a small mom, okay? He lives his life generally with his buddies. He swims around in a lake with his buddies 
and all they do is hunt. We're around bait, we're around bait. Dunk, dunk. Large mouth, could be small mouth. That is critical, and that's exactly where we caught them. There he is. Good. Nice one. Just a nice one, just a nice one. I think we made a good call here. There he is. Just like a deer in a cornfield, a small mouth in a flat. It is the same thing. I always say you look for a breadcrumb when you're fishing to lead you. You know, it's kind of like E.T. when he put them, them uh, candies out and E.T. was like eating those things coming into the house. That's the, it's the same principle in bass fishing. You look for a breadcrumb, you look for a little candy to lead you to the next one. And that first bite that I got in this show uh, was, uh, it was a solid one, it was a four pounder, but it led us to where we're going. There he is. Found him again. Well, they are traveling together. You look over my shoulder to the right, there's a giant spawning bay, and we're way out in front of it. Not a real big one, that's a nice one. Definitely a nice one. Oh God, he's got five with him. God. It is a nice one. If I can hurry up. I'm gonna put this one in the live well, gang, real quick. Cause there was a bunch with them. Huh? Hold on. This is a nice one. It's bigger than I thought it was. I thought it was a two pounder. You know, it's it's what's weird is you 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 cover such expansive flats. Like if you look right here, let me show you real quick. If you look right here, that is a giant flat. I mean, that's a mile offshore all the way up into that bay. And you know, my, my and I talked about it earlier, it's, it's like the only thing that I always think of, it's you're trying to find that needle in a haystack. You're trying to find that palm tree on an oasis. And, and it gets to the point where you're, <laughs> you know, you're like, Gosh, is there anything on this flat? And then all of a sudden, got him. All of a sudden, it starts. Stay hooked. Nice one. That is the first bite we've got since it got cloudy. But the one thing I said to my main man, cameraman, Brandon, is, uh-huh. The one thing I said was, we just gotta start running new water. We pressed, we pressed a lot, ah, easy. This is when they wanna do bad things to you. What a day for a pleasure boat ride, right? I live by this, stay with them. Keep, keep, keep hunting. Best lesson in bass fishing. I went up on that flat, I was throwing up. Two and three quarter inch uh, Stray King coffee tube. Just a little dude, it, it's a bite getter, but what's cool about that little coffee tube, it was green pumpkin, purple flake, best color in the history of, of human beings. Oh. Fish, whatever, it, it, it's the color I go to to get bites. The minute I went up on that flat, big and I threw out and I got a bite. Nice one, just a nice one. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right. Come here. Nice little. Come here, you little chublin. All right. 
here's what we did. Here's what we did. Basically all I did was go up on the inside now to end the day. We're down the last minutes here. I went to a little 2.75 naughty, naughty, naughty little coffee tube. They are on every single dark spot. Found them, found them. So cool. Nice little dude, little chub. Look at you, the baby just spit up. Make a big lake a small lake, okay? Make a big lake a small lake Fish the biggest flat on the lake and never stop moving. Yes, sir. Until you collide. Two words. Were done.